what's up everyone, Brian with you from the Game Cabin. We're playing more Disco Elysium, and man, I have been looking forward to playing this game all freaking day, ever since I played this yesterday. So, anyways, we're here talking to this random girl guy. A uh, pale driver, the smell of wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something else on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. The photo, an ambero type from the turn of the century, is golden as her smile. Snap your fingers in front of her face. Excuse me, ma'am, I'd like to ask you some questions. Yeah, I think I'll be nice. Uh, no response. Whatever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Snap your Wait. fingers. Wait! The lieutenant stops you before you can snap. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Why? I just told you why. Uh, alright, well, I guess we can't talk to her now. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to cop here, dude, but whatever, whatever, if you don't want to cop. Uh, can I equip these? Oh, aha, aha, okay. So they give us plus one to interfacing. Can I just take my pants off? I can. I can. <laughs> uh, sure. You know, tight around the thighs, but tight around the crotch. Electrochemistry. Oh, yeah. Dude, I love this game. I love this game. All right. I don't know that there's really anything else for us to do, so we might just want to keep exploring. Never mind. Let's go. A foreign car kept in good condition. Uh, Astas Rajiko. One of the finest Zizmix uh, made motor carriages ever. An oldie but a goodie. Who drives these? That's cool, but I have a policeman things to do. Who drives these? Not many people outside of the Garad and Ravicho, uh, Ravicol. West 2, it appears. Hey, Kim, check this out. Astas Rajiko KK2. That's a classic model, the lieutenant replies with a nod. Never thought I'd see one repainted after what happened last time. Hold on, maybe I can impress him. Do I know what happened last time? No, only that the motor carriage is typically baby blue, the colors of Zygmunt the Great and ancient Zizmis Ruler. His banners were famously zaffir and white, the colors of the Stasrajiko. Let me guess what happened last time, Kim. Blue and white are the colors of Zizmik. Someone painted it, got a Zizmik mad, and boom, murder happened. That's, well, yeah, exactly it, much more or less. Except it was a crowd of them, tore him out of the vehicle and ran him over with his own tires. Dude, I kind of feel like I'm Deadpool, the more I play this. They said it was an honor killing. Hussar style, the Zizmic community protested the trial, flying the colors, he shakes his head, 5,000 came to protest. Oh my gosh. Correction, 4,395, the fourth largest public protest of criminal trial and revocal. My god, dude, I am smart. Um, hate to correct you, Kim. Is that so, officer? I'll take you at your word. Who are the Zizmic community? People were paid to protect. Let's leave it at that. Uh, what did the sentence killer? What they sentence the killer to? He studies his reflection in the car window. Four years from murder and reunion. Oh, that's bad. Those perps were remorseful. They're sorry. Knocked eight years off the sentence. That's the system. Uh, medium success. The prisons in the Greater Revocal Industrial Harbor are already full. Prisoners are expensive to maintain. The longer the sentence, the larger the cost. Kim, could our hanged man have been driving this car? I'll try avoid drawing far gone conclusions like this before actually examining the body, the lieutenant says with a slight smirk. But my initial guess is the two are unrelated. Interesting. I got an opinion on this paint job. Yes, detective? I think it looks better brown. They should have left it baby blue. Ooh. They should have left it baby blue. Boom, we gained experience. You're sure you're not Zizmic? He shares a smile with you only for a second. Yes, you're sure you're not. Or, if you are, it's only in the Revocalian way. 4 to 5% maximum. Okay. Did that give us anything? That did not give us anything. Why are you flashing at me? Everything's fine here. How much more do we have to explore before we have the murder? I think it's just maybe this. The lorry's probably still ordered fuel here, and now it's booze. This is the protest. Hello, protest. Hi. It says GRH. The Greater Revocal Industrial Harbor. Okay. Good luck with your protest, everybody. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Ooh, person. Wait, if I can talk to him, can I talk to any of these guys? Yo. Yeah, no one's blue. Nope. I can go in this building as well. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Fritic. Sick. Three T's. How idiomatic. All right, we're basically doing everything but our job at this point, because, you know, why not? Why not? Why not? Some flowers over here. Yellow roses, does it of them. Tulips, too. Probably something I'm going to have to talk to her after this, you know, I would think. 
Sant Brist Pharmaceuticals. A small cabin on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. Aw, oh, dang it. I was hoping for liquor. Uh, their logo is the Bloodless Rose, pure white, untouched by harm. Um, sh uh, just ask me if you need anything from Saint Ber uh, Batiste. We don't have stock prescription meds, but we do have nose fed, dramine, magnesium, and hype hyponagama. Whatever. Money, 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 money. Hmm. What do those products do? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Nasal spray, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Uh, I don't really know what hypogamma is. I guess it makes you feel less shit. It's recommended to use after lots of partying. Thank you for explaining, miss. Who's St. Batiste? You know, the pharmaceutical company? The one that sells meds out of St. Batiste? That one. There. Uh, she's right. It's a company derives the name from the city. Uh, name for what it is. A rare case where it's really... Uh, the full etymological history as far as almost anyone knows, at least. Okay, well, I'm done. I don't think there's anything here. What's this? ATM? Tape machine. A tar machine stands in this, uh, corner. A sign says one bottle equals ten cents. What is this machine? Hmm. Oh, that's a tar machine. Yeah, but what is it? She knits her brow confused. It's a machine for tar. You know, you find tar outside, like bottles or whatever, and you put it in the machine, then it gives you money. How do I pick up tar for the tar machine? You need a bag, I guess. We used to have some, but we gave them all out. Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. Okay. I still don't know what it is. I'm assuming if we pick up a tar bag, we put it in there or tear? I'd assume it's tar. Well, that was kind of worthless to go in here. I'm assuming that's kind of like our medical stuff we buy if we ever find ourselves actually in combat, at which at this point seems like how? <laughs> I mean, it's an RPG. Uh, welcome, welcome to... to Announces the rotend man. The remark isn't addressed at you. It's addressed at Kim. Hey, why are you addressing my partner like that? Don't you welcome to Ravachol me. My grandfather came here from a 3,000-year-old racist isolationist culture while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Oh, put down. Every school of thought and government has failed in this city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. You tell him. It's men like you who keep Ravachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. Yeah, go Kim. Uh, rhetoric. What he means is fixation on the Revacolian nation makes it harder for Revacol to actually attain self-determination. He's right. You're undermining our best shot at real self-determination. Stop ripping into this guy. Uh, so we are in limbo. <laughs> oh, come on, man. I just said welcome to Ravachol. It's a lorry driver thing. I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here. That I should watch myself and behave. Is he a Pokemon trainer? But you see, I'm an officer of the RCN. It's actually my job to make Ooh. sure you behave. I would advise you to remember that. Silence. The air between them becomes tense. Uh, your partner needs backup. Now's your chance to shine. Good day, Kim. I got your back. Give the lieutenant a punch on the shoulder. Well, I think we all learned something here. Now that's settled. You know what? Fucking egg him. You Let's do go. make a cute couple. You know that? The Loryman spits. The lieutenant sails and resumes his regular calmness. Now that that's settled, we have a couple of questions. Whatever you say, officers. He waits impassively, cigarettes smolting between his fingers. Uh, he smells of heavy motor oils and his breath of high tar cotton cigarettes. Probably Astra Whites. Uh, what was that argument all about? It's about biological determinationism, natural law, the sorting of the races. He spits a guy on the ground. Uh, how much spit do you have, dude? Not the most popular topic nowadays. Uh, with the coalition in charge and all, you might want to change the topic. That is, bury your head under the sand like common sheep. I get it. Someone has to be the unpopular guy. Oh, so you're just a racist. Makes sense. To be honest, I can't really remember what that means. Please explain. People who've studied these things say that you and me are superior by design. He glances at Kim. So naturally, we Occidentals should be in charge. Obviously, you can see the merits in that. Uh, alright. I can really tell you're a prime example of superior design. Open your eyes. Haven't you noticed something different lately? An unfortunate downturn, maybe. When members of the superior race cease to believe in their innate superiority, they've stopped competing for resources. Yeah, and what's the problem with that? 
The problem? The damn creeps are showing a really good game lately. Same with the mosquitoes. He throws a sharp glance at Lieutenant I, uh, Kim. And the other intruder species, too. They're on the precipice of cultural victory. Oh no, they're playing Civilization? Crap. What is this, then? Wait, what is this cultural victory? It's the type of the crypts the boogie streets are going for, right under our noses. And the others, too, on the radio. Heard any Chanosians lately? Heard any Moltentors or later? No, dominating culture is how they plan to win. Uh-huh. It's true he pushes on. Also, you need to realize the dangers of mixing races. Who knows? Blah, 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 blah. I don't really care about your racism, dude. Yeah, I think I can get down with this. Yeah, I'm not down with this. Why don't you go fuck yourself? Yeah, you know what? I'm a jackass, but I am not a racist. Don't push your luck, Rents. The man gives you a disgruntled look and turns his attention elsewhere, ignoring your presence. You know, I probably could have been friendly with him and actually had Looking some for conversations. Odd, huh? What are you hauling? Coming to tell me to fuck off again? Yeah, actually. Not much anymore. I'm here to pick up some cargo, but dock workers on strike. How long has this been going? What cargo are you picking up? Apples. Apples is exactly the kind of thing you'd say if you have something to hide. Sounds like a cover story to me. Look, Ace Detective, I've come from a long line of lorry men. We got ancient rights and privileges. I'm here to pick up a lot of fucking apples, man. Just regular Kijok picked apples. Kijok may be another derogator for a person of Grad, you think? Oh, so they grow apples in Grad? Yep, it's one of their main exports. They grow them south. Beautiful place. In fact, it's a desolate wasteland whose name literally translates its own ecological catastrophe. It features no scenic vistas and supports virtually no plant. Um. Yeah, you're wrong. Yeah, says who? It's literally in the name. <laughs> the lorry driver glares at you intently, then shrugs. Then I guess they grow apples elsewhere. You can never tell with those good jokes. They're everywhere. He means the people living in Grad. Yeah, you know, whatever, the generates. Okay, so why the word? Because that's what they're called. Okay, so it's an ethnic slur. Hey, if the name description fit. So can I see the apples? Uh, did you miss the part where I said they aren't here yet? Besides, if I had some, I wouldn't go put my nose in them. Relax, you got all you can here. He probably doesn't even know what he's hauling, even if it is something unsavory. He So he should remain unaccountable. Something about rights and privileges. Yeah, the big deal, blah, blah, blah. Hold on. What's a carter? Someone with a cart. And that's a privilege? Sure fucking is. We have a guild and everything. Very ancient prestigious. So, you're in a Carter's Guild. God damn right. They've been trying to fuck us out of our heritage and name profits, but will the child replace us? They'll regret it. Okay, we're done for now. I'm done with your crap. Okay, let's look at these magazines. Jump Jams. Glossy Mag, Most Able-Bodied Men. The issue hosts a top ten list. Welcome to Revacall. Okay. Oh, that's the dude again. So, we came from in there, did we not? No, we did not. Oh, but this is the close sign, right? Please use main entrance. So let's go find her dead body, maybe, here in a second. Corpus Canenium. Before you stand a motor carriage, the bodywork covered in blue and white livery bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. The Corpus Canyon mortar carriage. Open the door. In the cabin, you're welcomed by a set of steering levers and a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, the soft glow of fuel, preheated gauge. Uh, a sense of leather work and heavy fuel oils wash over you. Pick up the radio. The frequency uh, table lights up a green button labeled prime line glows like a feline eye and then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our Kelling from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done this a thousand times. Uh, come in, Delta 10. This is Firewalker. Copy. This is Officer Elise de Merte, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? You could swear she was friendlier with the lieutenant. Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. I wonder what Kim's default radio station is. I need you to connect me to a civilian, a Sylvie. She may have resp reported a murder. I'm going to press the button lab labeled saved. As always, it's DJ Mesh and Flacco, and you're listening to Suspend Freaks MM, bringing you the hottest, the nastiest, the most vulgar. A fleck of seagulls takes off nearby, startling the roaring radio. 
Right away, the lieutenant reaches in the cab and turns off the radio. He's not looking at you as he says, Someone must have been messing with the radio or picked it at a random frequency. You wanted uh, the prime line, right? Speed Freaks FM. Huh? Oh, that's what that's called. He's trying hard to act surprised. Go for it. Turn the radio back on while it's still in the Speed Freaks FM. Pick up the radio again. Souped up carriage for one bad bad mama's boy. F -f for the heavy of f -f foot and freaky in. God damn it, Lieutenant moves quick as he, the Viper as he switches off the radio and sets it on prime line. Then he turns to you. Look, it helps me to stay alert on long nights, okay? It's a method. I'm not some kind of speed freak or he shakes his head fur uh, furiously staring at his feet. Sure, you don't have to explain yourself. I'll just forget it. What about heavy of foot? You would be too hard if you had this motor carriage. You would be too if you had this motor carriage. But seriously, let's quit joking around, right? We have a case to investigate. This is Precinct 57. Can I connect you to someone? Um, I need you to connect me to civilian. Of course, what's her number? Kim. Didn't she get the number? Yeah, there's her number. Received. Hold on, officer. Wait patiently. Start slapping a marching rhythm on your thighs. Give it a minute. She might be busy. Takes her a bit to get on the phone. Officer, she finally returns. I have Sylvie uh, Maliki on the line for you. Yes, hello. A female voice greets you through static. It sounds like she's a million miles from here. Hello, this is the police call, and I have some questions for you about your last day at work. Sylvie, I believe we've met before. This is me, a detective from the Whirling and Rags. Oh, right. She recognizes your voice almost immediately. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? You quit your job at the Whirling. Why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? You can hear her tense up on the other side. Honestly, I'm, I'm not really discussing it with... I'm not comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Why not? Wait, why aren't you comfortable? We'll ask. I, uh, let's just say I left because I need to get away from someone. Did you leave because of Gauté? What? No, why would you ever think that? He told me he asked you out. Are you saying that didn't happen? Sylvie, don't be afraid of that pig. You have to stand up for yourself. So you do agree quitting your job just because someone asked you out is an overreaction. I'm gonna go one. I'm gonna convince her. I don't remember him saying that. Please don't bring Garte into this. It's none of your business. God, why can't? Why didn't you just mind your own business? She mutters. I already said I don't want to talk about this. You're just messing everything up again. I'm gonna ask her again. Let's try this one more time. Don't be afraid to stand up for this pig. Ah, I don't know if I can do it. Was it you who called the police? No, not me. But why didn't you call? Didn't the courts around your workplace bother you? What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the union already knew about the corpse. You should have called the police. No one calls the police. You can hear her adjust the receiver. The union would get angry. Uh, you know, she seemed to be looking for words. What the union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which, like everyone else here. Uh, is she speaking the truth? The union's law? I am the authority around here. I mean, I am the authority around here. Okay, she obviously doesn't want to challenge your authority. You feel much better now. <laughs> Good. Tell me exactly why did you let a corpse hang in your backyard for weeks instead of calling us? I, I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. Push her further. Show her the error of her ways. Yeah, authority. You ignore the law to save your own skin? I, I didn't know I had to report it. I thought someone would take him down eventually. Her voice breaks. It's a little late for tears, isn't it? Should have used them to summon the police earlier. You can almost hear the girl getting smaller on the other end of the line. She almost drowns in static. Do you know who made the call? No, I honestly don't. Uh, it was someone else. The lieutenant makes a note. We'll find sooner or later, officer. It might just take a while. All right, next question. I think I got everything I need. Uh, I do hope so. Please don't call me again. Bye. Uh, she's ready to hang up. Empathy, medium. Screw it. Let's do it. Oh, because I got the inexplicable feminist agenda. I'm actually plus two. Let's do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ah! She does not have a problem with you. It must be someone else she's angry about. Some other guy, like Garte. Yeah, definitely some other guy, like Garte. It's definitely not me. You know women and their constant problems. Yak, yak, nag, nag. How's someone supposed to get the love going on like that? Seriously. This is where you step in. You're a lieutenant. Love matchmaker extraordinaire. Help the poor girl out. At least she turns into a spinster. Oh my god, not a spinster. Yeah, she's a woman. Probably just playing hardball with the goods. Women are just transsectional. Wait, we gotta do our womenist agenda here. 
What am I, deranged? A woman doesn't have to be married. She doesn't have to be in a relationship. Also, feminism. Boom! 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 What, deranged? I'm just telling the things they are. Can't a man even be honest in his own head anymore? You have to act, Lieutenant Love. You have to calm the hysterical girl down. Tell her you've got everything under control. Then go and have little boys talk with the man himself. Think, think you can do that, Lieutenant Love? <laughs> Whatever this empathy failure tells you, don't take the quest. It's not wonderful. It's ugly. Are you still there, kiddo? Listen, I got everything under control. Daddy's going to take you on his lap, little darling. Oh, God. Please, no. I don't want to say any of those things. Oh, man. I got to refuse it. I'm a feminist, man. You're just a gimp. What? You want to be more empathetic? Call was terminated by the other party. Anything else? Um... Connect me to my station. You hear a man throat briskly, then answered, Gottlieb, what do you want? He's call carelessly chewing on a piece of hard candy. Uh, I was told to call the Lazarus. People were worried about me. Oh, it's you. Yeah, it's Firewalker here. Firewalker? Y yes, yes you are. Just don't breathe in general direction of your fire feet. Actually, wait. Do exactly that. Put yourself out of your misery. Take a deep di diaphragmatic breath in and you hear an exaggerated inhale and a long exhale on the other end of the line. Uh, it would be an artistic statement of some kind or another. Uh, Self-immolation has been all the rage in Lothamer Thwang for a while now, especially among university and students. It's particularly popular in the Kohai, where such acts get the most press. This is not about self-immolation, but why? Young religious people protesting the Surrey's government, which they consider to be oppressive, blah, blah, blah. Young people are stupid. I wish I was young and on fire. Mm-hmm, me too. You can still be. There's time anyways. Answer the man. Cop sets fire to himself. That would be quite an interesting conceptual piece, don't you think? This has been my plan all along. I want to protest the coalition government. Yes. From what I can tell, you're just not playing in your hands, disabling yourself from doing any actual useful work. Now, do you have any current pressing medical problems? I've lost all my memory. With all the damage you've been dealing yourself with drugs and alcohol, I'm not surprised. Anything else? What else? I'm not a brain doctor. Look at the bright side. You got a whole new life now. Use it wisely. Uh, I think I've had a heart attack. And you survived. Congratulations. Are you mobile? Even better. Anything else? Wouldn't worry about that. Officer, agent, coronary trouble all the time. Also, death is a natural part of life. Is there anything you can do to help me? What do you want me to do? Uh, you want a rundown of everything collapsing inside your body? Yes, I want the truth. You want the real honest to God truth? Stop drinking, eat magnesium, vitamin D. Our station's not a retirement home. We don't have funds to deal with the rock stars. <gasps> rock stars. And no, I don't want to hear a political commentary on the topic. In fact, I got work to do. Some idiot has glued his eyelids shut with uh, something else. It looks like Mac Torson. Cool. It is super glue. I guess that's it for now. The phone clicks. You hear the familiar voice. Uh, you know what? I'm done for now. I'm done for now. Let's look at the dead body. Pull up the toolbox. Tools are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective. Take the pry bar. Take the rubber handled chain cutters. Take the flashlight. And push in the toolbox. Then run your levers. Uh, do I know how to operation? You know, release the handle. I'm just going to leave. Let's go. I'm just going to leave for now. We should go probably do our mission here at some point in the game. Hello, let's go find a dead body after we look at the trash. There are bottles inside. You can pick them up if you have a bag. Oh, no. We could do it. I need a bag. I need a bag. Uh, what are you doing back here? Well, we found the dead body. Kono's got this! The boys throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than 12. Uh, if there was ever such a thing as an ugly kid, this is it. He's almost exquisite, uh, exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. Oh, yeah. Never could be, Kuno. Yells the other kid behind the fence. Uh. Hey, kid. Word. Police business. Right in the dick, Kuno. Get him right in the dick. The children ignore you. Love it in the dick. The boy is sweating profusely. His eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Uh. Hold on. What does this mean? The kid is obviously high. Stop getting high at my crime scene. Kuno. These kids, man. The fuck does Kono know what a rake is? Kono's not a gardener. 
Kid, you want to hang out? I'm not an arc. Look, are you kids siblings? Kim, what should we do? Kid, you want to hang out? I'm not an arc. Fuck no! Kuno doesn't buy that shit! Fucking entrapment shit! Can I arrest him? Can I shoot him? Fast, this kid has got street smarts. Are you kids the siblings? Fuck are you talking about? He throws another rock. Us Kuno. He says we're fucking each other! Kim, what we should we do? Shouldn't we shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. You will see. You will see. The language these kids are using, pure, pure unfettered ID. There will be no reason with these creatures. Look, I have questions All for you. Alright, entertain the cool no. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. The kid moves his hands like a basketball player dribbling fast. The body, what do you know about it? Shitload pig, what's your question? Don't tell the pig. Uh, this is uh, where you quickly ask him questions, real cop questions. Do you know who he is? Uh, he's a gimp. He's trying to hide the fact he doesn't know anything. So you don't know anything. Kuno knows all kinds of shit. Kuno's not a snitch. Do you know anything? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think they know anything. There's no Night City anywhere. It sounds like a name of some pulp science fiction novel. The fictional city name, Night City. Why, well, you gotta be riding Kuno's ass. You haven't been where Kuno is. You haven't been in Kumo's head. You want to know where Kuno was? You want to know what Kuno's been effing up to? Don't tell him, Kuno. It's lame. It's not effing lame. Kuno's building Kuno City, Night City, Rage City, the City of Rage. That's it. And it's not lame. Lame. That's the name of Kuno City, bitch. Get the fuck off Kuno's back. Okay. It's impossible to deduce what this is about. Have you seen anyone suspicious? Just a couple of pigs. Okay. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Okay, I'm off. I'm done with these kids, man. It smells like spoiled meat and curdly dairy. A human body, a human being dis, uh, decomposes. Human being decomposes. Yo, I want this. Perception, there are several footprints in the mud left by work boots, anywhere from six to 12 bears. Uh, get an exact count. Morale? My morale dropped. Why'd my morale drop? I damaged my morale? What? What? Despair creeps into you, getting fat on your weakness. Whatever noble intentions you once had as a police officer, it's eating them all up now. You're still coming up with sentences. That's a step up from total annihilation, right? I'm seriously running out of shit to give. Let the corpse hang on trees. I'm quitting. Fuck you. I've wasted my life protecting humans. They don't deserve it. I'm done. No one even likes cops. I wish I was effing dead. I'm seriously running out of shit to give. Fuck me, please, the rage you have after we finish the investigation. Please, the rage you have after we finish the investigation. Nothing you can say would make you feel any better now. I'm so confused. Cop gives up the detective genre for social realism. Another police officer resigned from the RCM following a nervous breakdown. So did I just lose the game? Oh, all right, so we just lost the game. Apparently, I shouldn't have tried figuring out how many boots there were. I didn't know you could lose. Huh. And this is all the way back to our save. So we basically lost all of our progress. Well, all right. That's fun. I guess I'm going to do all this off camera and then we will pop back in with the next episode. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, drop a like, comment, let me know what you think. As always, hit the subscribe button, join the game, comment, share your support. I'll see you guys later. Bye, everyone.